Welcome back everyone to our lesson about variation methods and Hamilton principle. Uh, in our previous video, we introduced Hamilton's principle in very simple terms. Uh, actually, to be honest, they were uh, very non-mathematical terms. But uh, what we introduced were the tools that we will be using uh, all over the finite element uh, uh, course that we are presenting here. Uh, to start uh, applying the Hamilton's principle, let's go and use it to derive the bar element, um, uh, which is the simplest uh, structure of, uh, that we can uh, use, uh, and see how we get. We are going to get at the end the same equations that we got before using the weighted residual uh, methods. Uh, let's consider uh, a bar element with distributed force and end forces, uh, P1 and P2, distributed force F of X. And uh, let's start by writing down the, ex uh, the expression for the external force. The external force, uh, sorry, the external work uh, done, uh, it will be due to the two concentrated forces here. So uh, P1 will be multiplied by the deflection at node 1 which is at x equals 0, while P2 is multiplied by the deflection of node 2, which is at x equals L. And for the distributed force, <coughs> it will become the integration of uh, the force the distributed times each uh, uh, times the deflection at every point integrated over the domain. Uh, just to uh, remind ourselves here, remember that the work done by any force is equal to the value of the force multiplied by the distance moved by uh, whatever uh, point it was applied on. That's why uh, we, this is the expression for the external force that we have. Uh, sorry, the expression for the energy exerted by the external force. Now we write the uh, expression, the general expression for the potential energy, and in our case the potential energy will be only uh, uh, the uh, elastic energy, which is defined as half the uh, integration of the stress times the strain over uh, the volume. Uh, here uh, you may recall from uh, basic physics that the energy exerted by a force applied on a spring was equal to uh, the half the stiffness times the uh, elongation of that spring. It's the same principle. Uh, if you are not really uh, clear about how we got this expression, I would advise you to review mechanics of material. Anyway, uh, from also the mechanics of material, uh, for any linear material, we can express the stress as the modulus of elasticity or Hooke's uh, modulus times the uh, strain, which can uh, uh, be replaced into the energy term to obtain the uh, potential energy or the strain energy in terms of the strain only. Uh, here we are going to uh, take this one step further and also go back to mechanics of material to see that the strain is defined for a bar as the rate of change of the deflection uh, 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 the rate of change uh, of the deflection with respect to the x coordinate or the length of the bar. Using that, we get finally an expression of the uh, potential energy or the elastic energy in terms of the deflection. And here we have the deflection uh, d differentiated with respect to x. So what we what we did here was starting from the stress strain, uh, the stress and the strain uh, as uh, functions that present what's uh, present the uh, potential energy and we ended up with this uh, the potential energy presented in terms of the deflection. So now we have the potential energy and the external work done all functions of or functionals of the uh, p uh, the deflection. Uh, here uh, we apply Hamilton's principle uh, by uh, uh, taking the uh, variation, uh, taking the variation of the external work. The variation will apply only on the deflection here, as you can see. And even in the potential energy, we had 
the differentiation squared. So we, we, using the chain rule, we get the variation of the, uh, of the rate of change times the rate of change. This now can be uh, used. Uh, oh, we have another point here to remember. U does not change with Y and Z. It doesn't change across the cross-section. This is one of the assumptions of bars, is that uh, the deflection of the bar uh, is constant over any cross-section. So uh, this is uh, by uh, assumption of the theory. Uh, another thing is that if we assume, and this is an extra one here, if we assume that we have a homogeneous cross-section, that's to say the moment uh, the uh, modulus of elasticity is constant also over the cross-section. So now everything is independent of Y and Z. So we can take this, uh, so we can perform the YZ integration, uh, which will give us the area. So what we have here is we change the variation of the strain energy or the elastic energy from an integration over the volume to an integration over the length times the area. Uh, notice here that I'm keeping the modulus of elasticity and the area inside the integration, which is just for uh, generalization. Uh, the um, the cross-section area can change with x, and the modulus of elasticity can change uh, with x as well. But remember that we are preventing them from changing across the cross-section. Uh, with respect to y and z. Anyway, <clears throat> putting all this into Hamilton principle, notice here I changed the sign of the work and the uh, potential energy. It doesn't matter because it's equal to zero. Uh, uh, here you have everything in terms of variation uh, and uh, uh, sorry, everything in terms of the function u, which is a function in x. So this is the Hamilton expression, which now can uh, be uh, used further to uh, derive the finite element model. Up to this point, we haven't used anything approximate. It's uh, all what we had, all the uh, information we have about the bar is there. But at the coming step, we will start using the interpolation functions or the shape functions instead of the exact uh, value of the function. Uh, recall that we can uh, get the variation of u uh, as the product of the shape functions times the variation of the degrees of freedom. Remember, variation is always performed on the uh, important, quote unquote, important uh, parts of the problem. So here the important thing will be the unknown deflections u. Similarly, the variation of the slope of u will be the slope of n times the variation of uh, the degrees of freedom as well. Another note here before uh, going further is that uh, u is a scalar quantity. And similarly, uh, the variation of u also is a scalar quantity. Uh, when it comes to linear algebra, the transpose of a scalar is itself. So I can uh, use freely uh, uh, the transpose of uh, variation of u instead of uh, the variation of u because it's the same. Uh, however, when it comes to the vectors, it will change how it looks. Uh, instead of having uh, a row vector of uh, interpolation functions multiplied by a column vector of degrees of freedom, now I have a row vector of degrees of freedom multiplied by a column uh, uh, vector of uh, the uh, interpolation functions. Uh, notice that this still is a scalar as much as this was. Use all this now, we uh, can actually extract the variation of the degrees of freedom outside all this bracket and leave everything else inside. And that's what we were looking for actually, to get this outside the, this bracket now, if this is equal to zero, then either the variation is zero or all this bracket is zero. The variation, of course, cannot be zero because it will be zero only if I know uh, everything about the problem. Since I don't know, 
then the variation is still arbitrary. It cannot be equal to zero. So this implies that this bracket is what's equal to zero, giving us finally the equation of motion we were looking for. If you uh, investigate into this equation, you'll find that this term represents our stiffness matrix exactly the same that we got from the weighted residual method, while this term represents the generalized force due to the distributed forces, and this, are, uh, this is the vector that comes from the end forces applied on the bar. Okay, uh, you may say, okay, we didn't do anything new, we got the same model. Yes, that's exactly what I was looking for. The point is now we have a new tool to derive our equations. We are going to use this tool later to attack any new problem. I don't need even to have a differential equation uh, to get the finite element model. I can start from the energy terms of any problem and then derive the finite element from that uh, for that problem. Uh, uh, if you are uh, very clear about this, you can skip the next video, which we, uh, which we will uh, uh, present how to derive the uh, beam element uh, in. Uh, if you still want to see how Hamilton principle uh, can be applied, uh, bear it with me and watch the next video uh, in this lesson. Uh, to, to see how we can def derive uh, further problems using the beam, uh, using the Hamilton's principle. Just to note here, uh, the following lesson uh, will be about uh, further problems using beams. So I would really recommend that you watch how we derive the beam element using Hamilton principle. Okay, uh, so see you next video.